Hello, my name is Oshale and you're watching Oshi Reads. Like the new intro? I was just tired of saying, hi guys, hi guys, hi guys. Just feels so very last decade. <laughs> also, the term guys, I'm not so fond of. We all have different pronouns and we're all claiming them and guys just didn't seem relevant anymore. So, and I also like the little touch of classic Disney channel that my new intro gives me. So once again, let's all soak it in. Hello, my name is Oshale and you're watching Oshi Reads. <laughs> I have to get used to it. But I am gonna be drinking throughout this video, not an alcoholic beverage, <laughs> but still, just, if you see it in some of the cuts, that's what's going on. I'm gonna have it right here. And let's begin. Today's video is kind of gonna be a part one of a three series. And that is going to be a series of videos that if you've clicked on this, you already know the title, Books of the Decade. Yes, Books of the Decade. Sounds so dramatic. But uh, this is just the overall general Books of the Decade portion. We're also going to have a Books of the Decade series portion as I quickly realized while looking over all the books that I've read in the past 10 years, well as many of the books that I could find on Goodreads slash Amazon, is that this was certainly a decade of series, right? So that is going to be coming up next after this video, so stay tuned for that. And then <laughs> the last and three part is going to be Books of the Decade, the Romance Edition, because y'all know I love romance, that's primarily what I read, and that's going to be very, very difficult just kind of going through and paring down to the best romance books I've read in the past 10 years. Now this decade, I am going from 2009 until 2019. As you all know, in just a few weeks, we'll be entering 2020, the roaring 20s again. <laughs> a new decade will begin, and I just wanted to wrap up this decade by doing this, doing this series of videos. I felt like it would be better than doing a best books of 2019 type of thing. Now I will of course be throwing in some books I read this year. Uh, some of them will appear in this series, so yay, killing two, wait, killing two birds with one stone, that's the saying. And also I will try to stay away from books that I've mentioned in prior best of videos in this decade. So if I have, and I'm not I'm not very consistent on making these, but uh, I believe I have the best books of, I wanna say 2014, 15, but I will go ahead and uh, list all of my previous best of videos in the cards and down below, so you can go check those out if you want more detail into specific years, or at least the years that I posted. But without further ado, let's jump right into this video. Just a little disclaimer before we begin, if you are looking forward to seeing a ton of serious, deep, meaningful books, this may not be the video for you. The past 10 years of my life were extremely difficult. We will call them the come up years, if you will. So a lot of these books were lighthearted reads that really touched me and created a moment in time, if you will, that have carried me through these difficult, harrowing times. My mental health was not the best in the past decade. My financial health was not the best. My emotional emotional and physical health at times was not the best. I have definitely been in a place where I didn't know how I was going to make it from day to day. So I am definitely reflecting back on the past 10 years and feeling very grateful for where I am today, how far God has brought me, how much God has blessed me, and realizing that they were truly the years that have made me into the person that I am today. And these books definitely have a large part to play in that or small part to play however you would like to look at it and you know have helped create me into the reader and person I am right now so I'm very grateful I feel very good and yeah these are in no particular order first up is a book that I have discussed already in the on this channel uh, several times actually and if I do inc include a first book in a series uh, in this video that is because I am not I have that is because I have either not read the rest of the series or I have no plans to read the rest of the series and these books do a great job of standing alone in my opinion but the first book I have to show you all is Roses by G.R. Mannering I really really loved this book this is a fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast it holds a special place in my heart Beauty and the Beast is probably one of my favorite fairy tales and it always stands up so well in a retelling it's pretty hard to mess up this 
particular one and I just really really enjoyed this book I remember after reading it I felt an overwhelming feeling of joy and it was just this perfect little moment after reading it and I just thought it and it was wrapped up so perfectly and obviously you know it was an open-ended ending in the sense that this is the first book in a series but I also think it stands really well alone and the bonus as I've said numerous times on this channel is GR Mannering is a fellow booktuber and I definitely think you guys should go check out her channel she is wonderful and yeah roses the next book is following along in the same vein. I have not yet continued on with this series, but I have large plans to in this next decade, and that is Unwind by Neil Shusterman. This book was such a visceral read for me. The ideologies behind this book, the storyline, I think is absolute genius. This was my first introduction to Neil Shusterman, and I remember coming away from the story in awe at what he was able to create out of his imagination, how unique the storyline is, and how masterfully the story unfolded and how conflicted I felt in so many scenes while reading this book. This book really challenged a lot of my ideas and really made me think, you know, for a sci-fi dystopianish <laughs> knew it uh young excuse me young adult book it really did have some deeper themes here and really caused me to really dig deep and be a little bit more introspective with some of my beliefs so i definitely think that this book stands alone uh it is the first in a series but it stands alone brilliantly and i highly recommend this book if you have not read neil schusterman yet and i do know he has a very popular series out right now Unscythe, Scythes, I can't remember what it's called, but you guys have seen those gorgeous covers everywhere. And I think that this is a great place to start. Unwind. Next up, following in the same vein, is book one. I don't know if it's a duology or a series. I only read the first book, and I'm actually going to be holding up the second book because I do not own the first book. I ordered the second book because I had read the first book and I borrowed it from the library. So I bought the second book, but I haven't read it yet, but I'm holding it up. I know. And this is Vivian Apple at the End of the World. I'm holding up the sequel, Vivian Apple Needs a Miracle. But I will be talking about Vivian Apple at the End of the World. Are you confused yet? <laughs> but Vivian Apple at the End of the World was an amazing post-apocalyptic story. And this is by Kate Coyle. It was so imaginative, so witty, so fresh so just innovative to me. I'd never really read anything quite like it, how it managed to merge humor and this sort of hysteria because it is the end of the world and things are falling apart very quickly. But things are also coming together for our protagonist in her life. And it's ironic that at the end of the world, she is getting to truly live for the first time. But I highly recommend at least the first book, Vivian Apple at the end of the world. I do plan on finally completing this series and finally reading Vivian Apple Needs a Miracle. And if there are any other books following this, then I will promptly pick those up as well. But I just, I really enjoyed this next book I have to share with you all is a book that definitely had a cultural impact in this past decade and it was actually even turned into a motion picture film and this is Room by Emma Donahue. Now as you can imagine this book has a horrifying and highly disturbing premise. I'm not going to go a lot into the synopses of these novels but uh, if you have been hiding under a rock for the last decade this book follows a young woman who was abducted and ends up bearing the child of her abductor and they live in this very small room and she is sort of scrambling for an escape plan because her child is getting bigger and bigger and they cannot continue to stay in this room. Now this young boy all he has known is this room for his entire life and it is told from his point of view. So it is certainly very interesting to see all of these horrors unfolding through the eyes of a small child, his perspective, his emotional journey and his harrowing journey to freedom and you know the love of a mother for her child despite the circumstances it was such a heartbreaking story and yet it left me with so much hope and so much like belief in humanity and in our strength and our strive to survive at all costs but it is is a really great book i really do recommend it it is worth all the hype and yeah it's earned its place onto this list 
The next book is a classic and if you have been on my channel for any length of time then you know that this is my favorite book of all time. I have to include it in this list because rereading this book this past decade has brought me moments of pure peace and sometimes it was the only peace that I could find but I can always count on the March girls and the March families to bring me that little ray of light when I have needed it in the darkest of times. And that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This uh, is my newest edition that I've had for the past several years. I do plan on collecting several more editions of this novel because it is my all time favorite. But I highly recommend that if you have not yet read Little Women, I do think that you should go ahead and pick it up. It is a very heartwarming story that follows four sisters growing up in a prevalent time in world history and it also shows family dynamics it shows the pressures of being a woman at this time and sort of the pressure to follow societal expectations and the consequences that come from going your own way so I do recommend this at the heart of it is a family story of a bond between sisters and a story of friendship as well as a story of love so highly recommend and y'all know it's my favorite Looks like I have stumbled onto my classics section and this is a book that I first read when I was quite young, too young to really truly fully understand what I was reading. But my father was always one who took me to the bookstore as a child and he always pushed me to read much higher than my reading level and he actually encouraged me to reach for classics and reach for books that were too hard for me to read at that age and so rereading this again in the past 10 years in my adult years really brought some enlightenment <laughs> especially because I finally understood the story also it has an excellent uh, movie adaptation it has several adaptations but my favorite movie adaptation has Hugh Grant in it and I want to say Emma Thompson and Titanic what's her name Kate Winslet that is my favorite movie adaptation and Alan Rickman, may he rest in peace. It is an amazing movie adaptation. I highly recommend you go check it out. But of course I'm talking about Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, the queen. But yes, this is a great place to start if you've never delved into Austen before. I know a lot of people tend to recommend Pride and Prejudice, but I actually find Sense and Sensibility to be more interesting. Uh, ooh, I feel kind of bad saying that as, as if I've said something very taboo, but Personally, I find the story and sense of sensibility to be a lot more interesting, more dramatic, and there's more action in this novel for sure. A larger cast of characters, a more interesting cast of characters, and a more, mm, dare I say, empathetic cast of character. You can empathize a lot more with a, most of these characters than you can in the characters in Pride and Prejudice. So there you go. Also, there are a lot more people to root for in this novel, which I enjoyed. And I don't know, I think it's great. Again, a story where at the heart of it is the bond between sisters and the bond of a family. So I love books like that, you guys know. And the classic section continues. And right now I have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Now I absolutely adore Charles Dickens. This is another book that I read when I was much younger, but again, rereading this past decade has certainly brought some things to light and cleared up some things that were very confusing to an 11 year old. But this is a great story. It's masterfully done by Charles Dickens and the backdrop is the French Revolution. And at the heart of the story is a story of family, sacrifice, love, revenge. Oh gosh, I could go on and on. But the bonds of family and friendship to me come to the forefront when I think about this novel and the great sac sacrifices you make for those that you love. Um, I guess we can call it unconditional love. I absolutely love this story. So many nuances, so many thoughts go through my mind. So many ideologies are challenged and fleshed out. I think Charles Dickens does an amazing job telling uh, several character stories from several points of view and weaving it together in such a great way. So if you've never picked up a Charles Dickens novel, this is a great place to start. A lot of people do rave about Great Expectations, but A Tale of Two Cities definitely holds a special place in my heart. And continuing on is The Infamous the much revered Pride and Prejudice by again the Queen Jane Austen. This is a copy that I picked up in the past several months. I saw it on Amazon and I just had to have it. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking it up. It's still in its clear protective wrapping and I refuse to take it out of it but you all can see the detail here. It's absolutely gorgeous as you can guess that is Elizabeth Bennet and Fitzwilliam Dossie on the cover. 
yes this edition is indeed masterful and brilliant and beautiful and uh i'm so obsessed with it i'm not going to go into the story of pride and prejudice because you really would have been hiding under a rock for the past 10 years if you don't know anything about this story there are great adaptations out there you can find them everywhere you turn around so i'm not going to go into much detail about those but i do highly recommend this story it's a classic story but rereading it as an adult especially as a woman now in her 30s made, makes me think a lot about still to this day in 2019 soon to be 2020 the societal pressures of a woman to marry and marry well and marry up and sort of the feeling of worthlessness that is foisted upon women by society who once again are forced into this sort of cisgender normative story of marriage and children and home and if you are not a woman that follows that path how ridiculed you are and how ostracized and how people seem to value you based on those achievements only and if you have not achieved a husband or a family then by societal standards you are not only odd but worthless and it's so incredibly insane to me how you know this story takes place across the pond in the UK a century or so ago and you fast forward to the US and into 2019 and we still foister these ideals on women and the pressures are just as much the only difference is now with our freedom we have more choices and we can have a career and we have more freedoms but at the same time we still feel this pressure to attain this level of societal achievement and that if we have not checked off all the boxes that society tells us we need to check off by a certain age then we are spinsters that we may as well get cat than we are throwaways and worthless and it's so crazy to me even as a woman of Nigerian descent and, and as a Nigerian American woman I also have those pressures from my own tribal society in my own society in my Nigerian culture and my very specific tribal culture as both of my parents are from different tribes so it's pressure thrice as much it's just insane but reading this as an adult I have connected so much to Lizzie Elizabeth Bennett and once again we just we just we're here you know i get her now so much more than i did when i read it for the first time at 11 and for the second time at 17. reading it in my 20s through my 30s early 30s i just oh i understand it so much more the nuances and just being older and being able to relate to the character a little bit more and rounding out my classic section is the Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> I first read The Great Gatsby again as a young child. 11 was a very, very intense reading year for me. But uh, I reread it again in high school and then I reread it again uh, several years ago. I've tried to reread it in the past year or so with little success, but I just remember that reading it again this past decade as a fully functioning adult, or at least trying to be, it really opened my eyes and shined a light as to how much reading this as such style I didn't realize how much reading this at such a formative age really helped to form my ideas about wealth until I reread it as an adult and so many things start to res started to resonate with me so many themes within this book started to ring true at um, when it comes to the way that I look at the world right and, and and why you know that point of view was formed by me and it all all roads lead back to The Great Gatsby but if you have not yet read The Great Gatsby I highly recommend you pick it up it is quite short you know as a kid I, I thought it was so long but that's really just because the language and how dense the story is and how much is packed into to such a little package but it's totally readable I mean I reread it in like a day or so a couple hours so yes The Great Gatsby holds a special place in my heart next up I have a book by an author that I no longer stand for but reading this book really takes me back to when I did stand for her and <laughs> this was the first book I ever read by her and it turned me into a believer until I became a non-believer but this is slammed by Colleen Hoover and I remember the moment I read this book Colleen Hoover is the author that really introduced me to the new adult genre her and the author who wrote Beautiful Disaster, her name is escaping me at the moment, but these two ladies are the ones who introduced me to the new adult genre, which has now become one of my favorites. But I remember reading Slammed and feeling so moved. I remember 
really really engaging with the story I remember really connecting with the female protagonist and her struggle and really rooting for her and her love story so I really did love this book and it does hold a special place in my heart and I don't know it just it was sort of the beginning of a lot of things for me and a reading direction that I decided to take in this past decade that was about new adult and contemporary so for that I had to add it to this list entering my non-fiction section and the first book I have is the Bible that's right folks the Holy Bible I had a spiritual awakening in the year 2011 and I grew up in a Christian household so I've been reading the Bible since I was born basically <laughs> since I knew how to read I've been going to Sunday school since I could form thoughts in my brain and I grew up in church uh, some weeks I went two three four times a week depending on what was going on in the church that I grew up in so I'm very familiar with the Bible but it wasn't until 2011 when I had a spiritual awakening of my own and formed my own personal relationship with God and really fell in love with God for myself sounds weird to some doesn't to others don't judge and really fell in love with Jesus that I realized how important this book is to me and to who I am as a person and I would just like to point out some of the books that really impacted me. Genesis is an amazing book. Uh, so many stories in Genesis, so many ideas and concepts that really came alive to me after I formed my own relationship with God. Also Exodus for the same reasons. James is my all time favorite book in the Bible. I believe that James, the way it's written, uh, the tone, James as a person is my spirit animal. It's literally me. Also, I really love the books, um, Psalms and Proverbs for how lyrical and poetic they are. The book of Job is a masterpiece. It reads like spoken word poetry. It is so impactful and at so many points in my life, especially this past decade, I have connected with Job so much. I have gone through periods in my life where I have literally lost it all, you guys lost it all and had to start over from scratch and that's happened at least three times to me so i really connected with job and his story uh so many times i would be reading job and just sobbing because that's how much i connected with him also in the new testament i really enjoy luke and matthew specifically um for different reasons they both tell you know the gospels as they call them they both tell the story of jesus and his ministry but those two particularly stand out to me uh what other books of the bible have i really enjoyed esther is a very special book not only because it tells the story of esther but because as i've gotten older and really come into my femininity and my womanhood and my power as a woman what esther went through and her journey and how she was able to change the world really holds a special place in my heart that i love i could go on and on but whether you believe that these stories are fact or fiction, it's it's not hard. It's hard to deny the impact that the Bible has had in history, either for good or ill, whatever your personal opinion may be. I have to say that this past decade, this book has and continues to really hold the foundation to who I am. In my non-fiction pile is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now this book definitely came along at a time in my life where I desperately needed it. It is an amazing book if you are looking to really dive deep into your creativity and sort of reignite your creativity and your passions. It'd be a great way for you to really clear your mind and look at your creative sort of process in a new and invigorating way and i really love this book because of what it did for me at the very specific time that i read it it really helped me to write two novels in particular for which i will always be grateful so i highly recommend this book just in order to spark your imagination maybe to get your creative juices flowing again and to really get to look to really get you to look at yourself as a creative person and to really value yourself for what you are capable of creatively the book that I read recently but I still continue to think about it at least once a day so it's definitely earned its place on this list and that is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I don't honestly I don't know how to put into words how much this book means to me. Michelle Obama is one of my personal heroes and reading her story and being able to relate to her on so many levels is certainly humbling and awe-inspiring at the same time. 
I have found even more reasons to love Michelle and her story is very inspiring and just a beautiful tale of perseverance. I feel as if Michelle Obama is what I don't I don't want to say every woman but what a lot of us black women aspire to be strong independent you know successful on all fronts in her career in her relationship with her children and yet she is not without faults she's not without failures she is not without pain without struggle she comes from humble beginnings and prizes family and you know her relationship with her partner above all and I think that is amazing you know for someone who has managed to achieve so much in the eyes of the world and in what we deem as success it is very humbling to see that her family is really what she loves and is proud of more than anything else and for a woman like myself and specifically for a black woman like myself seeing Michelle Obama as our first lady for eight years was something that uh, it's hard to describe if you're not a black woman, honestly, and it's something that, you know, I can never forget and will never be taken away from me. And it's something that I'm so happy that I got to live to see happen. And this past decade is just kind of anchored by that experience in that moment. And I just, ugh, I could go on and on and I feel myself getting emotional, so I'm going to move on. Next up is another sister story that holds such a special place in my heart and I think you guys are starting to see that I really love sister stories. <laughs> and this one is The Silver Star by Jeanette Wallace, or excuse me, Jeanette Waltz. Let me not get her name wrong. But I read this fairly recently and this is definitely a very re-readable re book. I have already reread certain sections and my favorite parts. The way the story is, tell, is told, I can't talk as usual, the way the story is told really reminds me of uh, a, a an old school storyteller or a folk tale being, you know, woven before my eyes. It is told in the perspective of Bean Holiday, a 12 year old who comes from a very erratic uh, home life and her mother is the type of mother that I honestly wouldn't wish on anyone but the love that she has for her mom and her sister is, is so beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. The story is one filled with hope sisterly bonds and the spirit of perseverance so I really do love this story it's one of those really quirky emotional heartfelt reads that also pack a pretty powerful punch you don't really realize how powerful and impactful this story is until you flip the last page and sometimes those are the absolute best reads it is a very straightforward and easy to read story but again you really don't realize the emotional impact it has until the story has ended and i love books like that highly recommend this Next up is a book that I read just a few months ago and it's already earned its place on this list. I haven't even made my way through all of the stories. I have a few stories left but I had to throw it onto this list because the way I feel about this book right now without even finishing it, it's not going to change. And that is What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky by Leslie Inyeka Arima. And this is a Nigerian author. She was born in the UK and raised in Nigeria and tons of other places based on how often her family moved. And her voice, oh, I cannot wait to see what else she writes. I am a fan for life. She's become an autobi author for me. But I will say that this book is filled with a series of short stories. Again, I will repeat, I have not made my way through the entire book. I have a little while to go, very little to go. I've been savoring it, so I have kind of been reading a short story here and there every couple of months. I first started reading this book in February so you can imagine that I have managed to stretch it out throughout the entire year and I will be finishing it before 2020 begins. But I will just say that these stories are um, heartwarming, heartbreaking, heartfelt. The lyrical prose is beautiful and masterful. The way the stories are woven together, um, the characters, the unique viewpoints I could go on and on. I highly recommend this anthology of stories, if you will. And I really am excited to see what Leslie is going to write in the upcoming decade. She's got a fan for life in me. 
Next up, I have a book by an author that really impacted me this past decade with all of her work, but when I had to sit down and think about which one of her books to add to this list, I kept coming back to this one. This isn't even the best book that she's written in my opinion, and it's not even the most imaginative or most interesting, but it is the book that struck struck the strongest chord in me and that I still think about quite often and I emotionally connected with so much that I couldn't ignore it and that is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and reading this book was a very emotional experience for me. I have never resonated with a family story so much and with a shared family experience so much and the protagonist in this book she and I could have been twins. It seemed as if we lived the same lifetimes, but in, in different worlds. Hers is fictional, mine was reality. Our childhoods were so eerily similar in so many ways that it actually was quite traumatic for me to read this book. And there were so many triggers in here for me, but at the same time, I'm so glad that I did read this book. It helped me to unpack a lot of hurt and baggage that I carried around with me from childhood. And it really helped me to see another character kind of live through some of the horrors that I lived through myself. I know that's really, really horrible to say and yet also raw and very honest but I'm just keeping it real with you guys. Reading this book was definitely a cathartic experience and I will never forget this moment for the rest of my life. For as long as I live this book will hold a very special place in my heart and it's very very good so go pick it up. <laughs> Next up, I have another book that recently came out, another anthology of stories, and this is Well Read Black Girl by Glory Edom. And this book is filled with stories written by authors that I admire, storytellers and creatives that I admire. Glory, you know, edited it together and she also has her own story in here. She is the founder of the Well Read Black Girl book club and I had to add this because her existence in the sense of her creative existence and her ability to have this book out is a cultural moment you guys it is a cultural moment and it speaks to the power of social media because the well-read black girl book club is a very prominent um book club that gained popularity and traction because of social media, the power of social media. And now it has really taken off and it has become a business of sorts and it's become a networking tool and it's become a gateway to, to which she was able to have an anthology with lots of other powerful, amazing black female authors who are and, and creators who are able to contribute to this with their own stories and their own voices. This is very impressive. This is amazing what she's created and I stand behind it wholeheartedly. I am excited to watch Glory's career as it unfolds and expands and to see what moves she makes creatively and what else she manages to put out and get behind. I can only speak for myself but as a black woman and as a black girl uh, I had such and I still do have such a strong desire to be seen you know to truly be heard because I feel as though I exist in a world that tries to silence me at every turn and when I do speak the world either doesn't take me seriously or doesn't acknowledge my pain or feels as if I'm somehow deserving of my ill treatment. I am deserving of my misogyny uh, that is foisted upon me. I am deserving of a human experience that dehumanizes and degrades me. I feel as though as a, as a black woman I am delegated to a space of being used, right? Being used either as a mule or a servant or a source to draw strength from, a place to leech from creatively, to leech from culturally, uh, to borrow without giving back, to sort of siphon from without pouring back into. I'm seen as a sort of source of, of power to take from and not to help or give back to. So I, I don't know how many other black women feel this way and young black girls, but it's something that I've found very hard to put words to almost my entire life until I've continued to educate myself and speak to other black women across all backgrounds, ethnicities, across the diaspora, and we all have a similar feeling of sometimes helplessness. We feel powerful and yet helpless at the same time. 
and the helplessness comes from the way that we are seen by the world and the way that we are treated at times by others and the way that we are pushed down and you know forced to be silent and I feel as though a movement is growing of black women who are standing up in their power of black souls and beings who are coming into their power and saying enough is enough and we're here and we're powerful and we're strong and we deserve this moment. We deserve to be seen, to be heard. Our stories need to be told and we're important and we matter and our experiences matter. We're not always strong. <laughs> we're not always black girl magic, right? We're also human and vulnerable and soft and beautiful and strong and everything all at once. So I say all that to say that this is very important and I support this and I support everything like this. Next up is a book that I have mentioned before but I had to throw it in here and this is Little Bee by Chris Cleave. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. I have already talked about this in a video I made fairly recently so I will link that. But Chris Cleave is an amazing writer and this book really touched me and I read it at the perfect time in life. Don't you just love books like that? And so it just will always hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> Next up I have a book that I really should have added to the romance section but I do feel that it belongs here as well because it is so much bigger than a romantic story and this is Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. This is another book that I read at a perfect time. I read it when I was yearning so desperately to move back to New York City. For those of you who may not know, I used to live in New York. It's kind of where I spent the most of this past, well half of this past decade, I won't say most half, and where I spent a lot of my formative years where I went to college and really became who the foundation of who I am today I would say. New York City will always be home to me. It holds such a special place in my heart and this book not only was a love story between two human beings but really a love story to New York City which I loved and I really needed it you know because I was making plans to move back and those plans kept falling through until I finally realized that God just didn't want me to move back and I belonged where I belong exactly where I am, right? I'm at the perfect place at the perfect time and everything is happening according to plan. But I still love New York and I really love the feeling this book gave me and I love a second, a well-told second chance love story. So there you go. Now I would be remiss, oh, in a very, very, very negligent way. It, if I did not add this book to the list, it's not a personal favorite read of mine, but it is a very important read, and it definitely holds a cultural moment in this decade. And that is dun, 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 The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this book is everywhere. I believe it's still on the New York Times bestseller list. Angie, you doing it, girl. But what I will say about this book is something that people are often, well I shouldn't say people, something that black people are often <laughs> uncomfortable to mention but I feel like it needs to be mentioned. And every time I do talk to a black booktuber creator on the space, we do have the same thoughts on this. So I feel very confident in stating this. But I do feel that if you are not a black person, that sounded so proper, but if you're not black and this is your favorite book or one of your favorite books, I do think you need to unpack why that is and really dig deep into kind of coming to terms as to why this is your favorite book or one of your favorite books but you know let's say Children of Blood and Bone is not. <laughs> Children of Blood and Bone doesn't make your list but this does. Yes this is a very important book. Yes this book is very educational for many of you and opens your eyes. For me this is a reality. For me and many other black people living in America or even abroad this is a reality and it's something that we have to live with every day. As an older sister to two black males this is a fear I live with every day. So, I mean, I'm sure many of you black women watching or black men who have sons, this is a fear you live with every day. So I will just say that if you are not black and this is one of your favorite books and uh, another book starring black characters who are, you know, in a fantasy world or on a fantasy adventure or in a sci-fi world, any other world where there isn't something traumatic going on or something that is keeping abuse and danger upon black bodies is not going on. 
I, you may not be reading books like that anyway, which is also something else to admit, uh, to examine. But I will just say that if books with black characters not living out black trauma in some form is not interesting to you or, you know, doesn't give you that same feeling as say this book does and yes this book is very very well written very important all those great things but i would you know unpack that i'm not saying that it's wrong or right i'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just saying it's something for you to unpack within yourself to question and to examine because i'm not gonna lie it does make me somewhat uncomfortable when i run across white readers who really love this book and count it as one of their favorites and yet they didn't like children of blood and bone or are not interested in reading books like children of blood and bone or you know some of the other plethora of books that are coming out with black characters who have agency and power and who are living these in these fantastical worlds and doing these amazing things. Um, I would just say that black bodies are not just for consumption when they're in a state of trauma or abuse and black stories are not just for co consumption when they're in a state of trauma or abuse. So I would just say it's really important to examine stuff like this and to really really dig deep with stuff like this because the racism and the microaggressions are so deep you guys are so ingrained in our culture and you know even I myself have to examine it for myself and really really think you know so that's all I'll say but I just had to add this to, li to this list but I thought that that was an important point to point out and yeah another book I want to talk about is a book I read in a day and deeply touched me and I just love and that's this song will save your life by Leela Sales I really want to reread it soon but this book saved me at a time in my life when I was working a sucky job and I needed an escape and the job paid very well but it was just uh, it was awful I hated being there I hated the environment and so every day I would take a book to read and I managed to read this book in an entire day at work and I just remember it gave me a much needed escape and not only is it a beautiful story told well and fairly short it just really was there for me at a time when I really needed it and I highly recommend it next up is a book that touched me to my core and that is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I know this book was everywhere quite some time ago but I, it's worth it's worth all the hype you guys. I definitely recommend you checking it out. It is a very poignant touching story told very well and is a story that will stay with you long after the last page is flipped. Those are some of my favorite tales and it's very very deserving of this American Library Association of Excellence in Young, Liter Young Literature Award. I think this one is called the Prince Award. It's very, very deserving of this Prince Award. I Please go read this book. It's so good, you guys. I love it. It's one of my favorite books in the young adult genre, in the contemporary young adult genre. It's worth it. It's so good. Go pick it up. Next up, I have two books by an author that has quickly become one of my favorites. I stand for her so hard, and I'm so excited for her new release, which will be coming out in 2020. So I will hold up both books at the same time. That is my girl, Elizabeth Acevedo. We have The Poet X, and we also have With the Fire on High. I'm not going to lie, I do like With the Fire on High just a smidge more than The Poet X. I know, it's, it sounds so crazy to say because most people are the opposite. They prefer The Poet X. But I am not the hugest fan of, you know, poetry and what is this called? Written word, uh, spoken, spoken word poetry is not really, I love it in the sense that I like to go listen to it. But reading it is, is a little bit different. I will say that I did listen to the audiobook and I kind of wish I listened to the audiobook first, the first go round, because it brings the words to life and I think that I would have had a completely different experience if I had listened to the audiobook the first go round. But I'm rereading it now with the audiobook and it is a completely different experience and Elizabeth Acevedo has an amazing voice. She tells these really powerful important stories about Afro-Latinx women and young girls and I think it's so important and she's just beautiful in the way that her mind works and her creativity and her storytelling ability. Her writing of course is A1 and I just love her and her speaking voice is so melodic I don't know and soothing <laughs> I really enjoy listening I really enjoy listening to her read her own stories out loud 
it just adds something really special to the experience and I don't think I'll ever ever read another one of her books without purchasing the audiobooks because she reads her own stories so so well. But yes, Elizabeth Acevedo is bae. Her books are very important and very well written. Just brilliant work and yeah. I love her and I cannot wait to see how much more joy she brings into this next decade of my life. The next book is by one of my absolute favorite authors and all of her other books that I really love are series so you will see her very heavily featured in my series portion but this is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black and I really need to reread this book. I say it very often whenever I speak of this book but it has one of the best opening scenes in a young adult novel I have ever read. It is just so good and it draws you in immediately into the story and things definitely take off pretty damn quickly and escalate and you just can't wait to see how it all ends. She wraps it up beautifully. I am a sucker for a vampire story. Ever since I grew up watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I have been a sucker for a vampire plot, okay? I love the Vampire Diaries and its various spin-offs. So anything vampire and I'm there. But yes, I loved this book and I love almost everything, actually pretty much everything that Holly Black has written that I've read, I've loved. So I had to add this to my list because it is brilliant. It is a standalone, which is like almost unheard of. And I think you gotta go check it out if you haven't already. Now this book is sort of, I don't know. I picked it because at a certain point, in time in my reading life, especially after starting booktube, Rainbow Rowell really really meant a lot to me in the terms of I really enjoyed her work and I, I own almost all of her books but the book I really wanted to pick is very problematic and while I enjoyed it the first time I read it, I've come to find out with deeper introspection that that book is very problematic and racist and so I had to not choose it because I don't want to continue to, you know, encourage that or support that in any way. So I picked this next book and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Now I will say that I'm not such a huge Rainbow Rowell fan anymore, but Fangirl is definitely a standout. It is so so good and it tells the story brilliantly of these two twin girls who are venturing out into the college world and separating for the first time in their twindom, twindom life. They're very different personalities and you know the twin that we follow, the, our main protagonist, has a lot of trouble adjusting to college life and I feel as though this book is very important for a lot of young girls out there. I personally can relate to it. Her character is very relatable and that struggle of being a freshman in a new environment, of maybe being a little bit more introverted and struggling more to find your place and your footing, to find a community of friends, to find out where you belong and it's so relatable and it's still relatable even now as I'm much much older and not experiencing college as a freshman. But yes, I think this book holds a special place in a lot of young girls' hearts and I am one of them. And last but not least, I don't have the book but I am going to pull up the cover here on my Kindle Fire. Ooh, just made a mess. And this is a book I have actually never talked about on my channel before. But when I read it, I really enjoyed it to the point where I'm adding it to this list. So clearly it was important and impactful. And let me just pull up the cover real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about and we can really talk about it together. But this is The Black Witch. It is book one in a series that I am very eager to finish in 2020 or at least to read up to you know however many books are out. I don't think the series is complete yet. I believe it is ongo ongoing. But this book you guys, oh my god, this is probably one of the best openers to a series I have ever read. It covered so many things to the point where I'm kind of regretful that I didn't talk about the book right after I read it because I read it earlier this year. And like I said, I'm very regretful that I didn't talk about the book back then because I had so many thoughts and I actually had this particular urge to make a very specific video. So in order to continue on with the series, since it's been so long since I've read the book, I will actually need to reread the first book, which I'm actually really looking forward to because the first book, like I said, is one of the best openers to a series I've ever read. It certainly stands alone. Um, not in the sense that you could just read it and move on with your life because it does end on a sort of cliffhanger so you do want to certainly continue on with the series but it stands alone in the sense that it's very strong on its own and it's not dependent upon a follow-up. 
it's very strong in the sense that the characters are fully fleshed out the story is imaginative and interesting and even though it is a concept that has probably been done before this the author who is Lori Forrest manages to put her own spin on it and her own flavor to it I don't know how well you guys can see this Ooh. yes the black witch and it says some echo of her dark power courses through my veins waiting to be released and I was really shocked by how much I loved this book and enjoyed it. I was not expecting it at all. I kind of went into it with no expectations and by the time the last page was flipped, I was in awe by <laughs> how interested I was and like captivated and just like raring for the second book which is out now. So I'm really looking forward to rereading that one, giving my thoughts finally, doing the video that I initially wanted to make and reading the rest of the series. Highly recommend, so good. And that concludes my Books of the Decade general fiction section. I will catch you guys in my Books of the Decade series and in Books of the Decade romance portions that will be going up shortly. And I hope you are having a good day or night wherever you are. Bye guys. See you next time. <laughs> Bye.